What's up guys, this episode we're going to dive into styling our Trello clone to look a lot more and function more like Trello itself. Because right now we are cheating with some bootstrap column stuff and that doesn't actually work at all like we want it to because um, when we create a column that goes too far, it wraps around and gets displayed here at the bottom. And we can fix that really easily by stealing a little bit of CSS um, from Trello. And it's actually really, really simple. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this row from Bootstrap and let's create one called board and get rid of column three and we'll replace that with list. And so those are going to be the components that we will use um, or style using our CSS. And we're going to write our CSS inside of the scoped style block inside of our view component. What this is going to do is make sure that this CSS that we write is only ever available inside of our view component and it would never conflict with any other board class or list class that we might have outside of it, which is kind of cool. So if you were to write this in your asset pipeline, it could apply to any of these classes, but writing it inside your scoped style block, this will only ever apply to that view component, which is kind of neat. So this uh, board, we actually want to have um, a few classes on here. And so let's take a look at how Trello does this. They have a board class here, and notably the important two lines that we want are white space no wrap, which is going to tell it to not wrap automatically, where we saw that with the bootstrap stuff, it's wrapping. Um, we want to have this board white space no wrap, and then we can refresh our page and we see that, well, now they're all in their own columns um, because we don't have the column three. So we can say list width is say 270 pixels wide and let's say display is inline block. So this is gonna be a block like normal except it's not gonna force the next element underneath it. This is actually going to allow those elements to be side by side. So here we go. We have now a scrollable sort of um, view. And what's weird is we have our header being cut off, our footer is being cut off here, and yet our content is still scrollable. And what we want is the board to control the overflow uh, X as auto. And so what that's going to do is tell it, well, if you have overflowing content, let's just cut it off and add a scrollable uh, thing to this area. So this is now scrollable instead of the entire page. So that helps a lot. But we also have some weird things going on where everything's like aligned to the bottom and that seems kind of odd, right? So because they're aligned to the bottom, we need to go have vertical align to top so that they will all be moved to the top by default, which is just, it seems kind of odd, but it makes more sense um, if you dive into actually what the vertical line stuff does, but by default, it's not going to align to the top, so you take a look at that. Uh, you'll need to have that, and we also probably should have, say, like a simple margin right of like 10 pixels, maybe 20 pixels, just so that we have some spacing between our columns um, like they do in Trello. We don't want these to be butted up right next to each other. So the other thing that we should do is probably add some background um, if we want to grab the exact same background from Trello, we can do that. Um, that would be this color right here and background would be that. We can do the same border radius of three pixels and very quickly here, um, and we should also do padding, of course. This should go on a list, not the board. Um, and we should do our padding and maybe do 20 pixels, we'll see what that looks like. That's a little much, so let's do 10 pixels. Um, and now we have our uh, lists that are all colored individually, and we can move those around, and they're all uh, starting from the very top and looking like we would want. So let's go ahead and get rid of this giant lists up there. Let's get rid of that notice. That'll give us some more spacing, and here we have a much better looking UI. Um, what we can also do is go into our layout 
application HTML ERB. And rather than doing container, uh, we can do container fluid from Bootstrap, which will actually make it a full width uh, UI. And our nav bar is going to need the same treatment. We can do container fluid here. Then that's going to move everything out to the sides so that we have access to all of those. So we don't really need our HR here that much anymore. And this is looking much, much better. We have a significantly better looking UI here. And the last thing I wanna do is actually just get rid of the div for the card around the text area and stuff, and then do an MB say one there. So that we have a UI that looks like this, that's very uh, much similar to the add a card UI like so. Now one of the things that I want to do is also add that link in here so that we can close this and open this. Right now it's forced open all the time, but I wanna make sure that that works when we add new components for each one of these lists. So I want to be able to extract out this entire intersection as a component, and we pass in the list into that, and then that will take care of handling all of the functionality per list. And so we'll get rid of some of this more global state inside of this current one, because this will be the board. It will say, well, a board has this many lists, go create those components, and those components will display all the cards, and so on. And so what we'll do is break this up into multiple components in the next episode.